Okay, start next. Uh, Tia and CVA, mm, do you heard about the stroke about Tia before? No. No, no, not really. You never heard about the stroke? Yeah, I heard about stroke, but the Tia, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, stroke, it's, yeah, you know, stroke is like uh, this one, yes? Maybe it's like inf uh, infarction, it's uh, block vascularity, vascularization of the heart muscle. Uh, stroke is um, blocking uh, in the brain, yes? Yeah, something happened and without, we haven't vascul vascul blood in vascularization in the brain. Tia, it's a temporary stroke, we can say it. It's temporary disease. Trans transit ischemic, ischemic attack. It means Tia better. Uh, t if we, firstly, we have Tia, and if you see the symptoms of the Tia or in the patient, you can treat it. Stroke means uh, your brain death, your brain tissue death. Here, we can we start with Tia. Transit ischemic attacks, brief episodes of cerebral ischemia. Yeah, ischemia, you know, if we do something, we can treat the situation, we can change something and save our tissue. Yeah, so ischemia, like when you, you can feel it when you're sitting, it's the same uh, ischemia in the uh, leg, yeah, you can feel it, yes, if you're sitting a long time. Uh, here, the same ischemia in the brain. It can be caused by spasm of uh, diseased cerebral artery. For example, here, or it can be a uh, cause of the clotting, blood clotting. For example, here, it's our brain. Uh, here, we can see blockage in the internal carotid artery. Uh, this blockage, you will learn uh, in the next lessons that we have two main arteries that um, give blood flow to the brain. It's internal carotid artery and basilar artery, two arteries in both sides. And the main is internal carotid artery here, and we can see atherosclerosis blockage here. Uh, if we see blockage in the great artery, we can imagine that we have uh, decreased speed of blood flow. And if you remember blood topic, yeah, decreasing of blood flow, it's uh, one of the cause of clotting. You remember platelets activated and we can see clotting, all mechanisms activated here. Yeah. yeah. And because of internal card, again, you see, you need to connect all your knowledge that you know before. Um, internal blockage in, in the internal carotid artery leads to uh, decreasing of blood flow in the brain. And in the little one, some small artery, we can feel, we can see blood clot in the middle cerebral artery, for example. And this, we can see area of tom uh, area that was um, supplied by this artery. And if we have see blockage here, it means all this area will be temporarily blocked. And this area mostly activated for our thinking and very great area, very small. Big area. Uh, That's why we can feel dizziness, loss of vision, weakness, paralysis, headache, or aphasia. It's depending on the region. For example, if it will be not here, somewhere here, it will be losing of vision. Somewhere here, it's losing of hearing. It's depending on the area. And depending on the area, we see different symptoms. Understanding this? Not all, uh, for example, tear attacks get uh, lead to the losing of vision, for example, or aphasia. It's depending on the area, depending on the vessel which was closed. Understanding this, guys? Yeah. Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, doctor. Okay. And uh, next differences lasts from a moment for a few hours. It's tear. We have. Uh, often early warning of impending stroke. Uh, 
it means few hours. During these few hours, if you see some symptoms close to the tear and you understand something happened for ischemia of the brain, you see, you need to uh, go to the hospital fast, have some um, drugs. For example, if it's blood clotting, you will have, take heparin. It's anticoagulant, if you remember. Or, uh, for example, it's, if it was uh, caused by spasm of artery, yeah, here or here, uh, by atherosclerosis uh, suffered artery, uh, you need to decrease your blood pressure, spasmolytics, and other drugs, but you need to uh, do, uh, do something. If you can um, treat TIA in these few hours, you save your brain, you say, oh, you mean, I mean brain, your patient, your patient, uh, brain of your patient, or for example, um, it, it will be normal again. But if you lose this few hours, or this patient uh, live alone and didn't understand that he have problem with the brain, it will lead to the stroke, cerebral vascular accident, CVA, different name. Sudden death of the brain tissue caused by ischemia. Understanding, guys. Firstly, we have TIA every time, but if TIA didn't treat uh, treatment, it will be stroke. This tissue will die. The cause of this atherosclerosis, thrombosis, or ruptured aneurysm. And here in this picture, you can see we have two types of stroke. You don't need to memorize this information for you guys. It's for your only knowledge, okay? For you must know, but you have two types. And hemorrhagic stroke is more dangerous because ischemic stroke, it can be cause of clotting or maybe spasm. And you can give some drugs to heparin, for example, or decrease your blood pressure. Um, give some dilatators and after that inhibit sympathetic system and everything will be better but hemorrhage stroke it means it's bleeding in here we you need surgery okay here in this situation we need surgery it is why hemorrhage stroke is more dangerous but for uh differentiate these two disease we need to um, computer do computer tomography, CT, do you know? Computer tomography, it's a, like a ring again, X-ray, but for the brain, more, more complicated thing. I think, you know, we need to do computer tomography of the brain for different say, which of the type we have, because you can't uh, treat patient if you don't know which uh, type we have. If you give um, giparin, anticoagulant, uh, for the hemorrhage stroke patient, it, you increase hemorrhaging for the brain. It means more tissue will be self-diet and you kill this patient. Or for, and, uh, but if the patient have ischemic stroke and you do operation, you again kill patient, you can help some you open here, cut the brain, and you can't understand what you should do because problem inside in the some small area in the brain. You can't cut your his brain. Understanding? Idea? Yeah. That's yes. why. Yeah, it's very dangerous situation. Stroke. That's why every time, firstly, uh, in the hospital we do CT, CT computer tomography. And we need to do it in a few hours, yes? Because we know it's TIA, firstly. And if we lose our hours, it's more tissue will be suffer. It means we can, more areas uh, will be died and we can lose this patient. Next, uh, here, effect range from uh, unnoticeable to fatal. Yeah, it's blindness. For example, if in the tear, in few hours, loss of vision, after the stroke, after this area was died, 
it will be blindness or paralysis, loss of sensation, loss of speech common. You see, in first time it was aphasia, but after the, after the stroke, it, the patient never speak, it's, he lose his speech. And recovery depends on surrounding neurons, collateral circulation. Yeah, it's depending of the uh, collateral circulation. If here we have many arteries, yeah, here, here. Uh, again, you remembered angiogenesis. Do you remember this one that we discussed before? And I said you angiogenesis, very important thing. You remember? Yeah, yes. Okay. And here, angiogenesis also can help. Because we know after the stroke, after the tear, some patient uh, treatment, yes, they can recover. Because after months, after two months, other nearest vessels start to produce uh, um, angiogenesis happen. And here, some little small capillaries will be also produced, angiogenesis here, here, here. And this area reactivate and again alive because of angiogenesis. That's why angiogenesis is very important thing. Так, next here. This is atherosclerosis, how it's looking. Mostly atherosclerosis uh, happened in the internal carotid artery here, this one. Uh, for example, this is uh, carotid artery thrombosis. If some part of this atherosclerosis breaks, and it can travel and close, you see, thrombose lodges in the cerebral artery close here, close here, and will be causing of the stroke. It's different mechanisms, you will read about this, but you must know the one of the reason it atherosclerosis too. Tak. And uh, next. I hope you understand about TIA and CVA differences. Next one, special circulatory roads uh, in the skeletal muscle. Uh, tak, we discussed a little bit about this uh, before. Highly variable flows depend on state of exertion. For example, we said the uh, yeah, we said in rest, our arterioles constrict and most capillary beds shut down. You remembered capillary beds? I said it's the most, they located in the skeletal muscles and in the intestines. And in yes. the rest, yeah, in the rest, this capillary bed shut down and total flow in the muscles is one liter per minute only. Uh, but during the exercise, arterioles delayed, here they was constricted, they delayed in response to epinephrine and sympathetic nerves, uh, precapillary sphincters delayed due to muscle metabolites like lactate and acid and CO2. And this capillary best opened because it's open, delayed sphincters, and blood flow increased for 20 folds. Так. Mm. And also here, one, one thing muscular contraction impedes flow. Isometric contraction causes fatigue faster than intermittent isotonic contraction. Why? Because, for example, do you remember isometric contraction, isotonic com contraction, what is it? Yes, yes teachers, two types of contractions, yes. Uh -huh. And can you give me example of isometric contraction? Do you remember? Um, yeah. Could you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys, you, if you remember, is a tonic contraction when your um, length of the muscle changed. For example, uh, if you, mm, contraction of the biceps, yes? Every time when you do something with your hand, every time it's constructed like uh, when you do exercises yes or when you stand and sit down contraction on the femoral uh, femoral muscles it will be isotonic isometric contraction for example when you do your posture yes when you're sitting your muscle of the back they have some isometric contract yes 
who take hand, who want to add? Maybe uh, like for exercises, uh, planking is one of an example for uh, isometric contraction. Yes. Like your muscles don't elongate, but they contract. Mm -hmm. And isotonic? And isotonic is, for example, as you said, teacher, biceps curls, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and you... Yeah, it's like with motion and isometric is without the motion. Contract. Mm. Yeah, without the, some movement, you're stable. Yes? Like, and for example, now, uh, because of knowledge of special circular road and skeletal muscle, you should understand that during the isometric contraction, we feel fatigue faster. For example, in the plank, yeah, it's it's very hard for do plank. For example, it's easier to do some isotonic sit sit and down. For example, yeah, 20, 30 times, it's easier. But isometric contraction, you can sit and down every time uh, for two, three, four minutes, for example. But it's harder for do plank two, three minutes. You agree? Yeah. Some for do you yes, do you, yeah do you try to do plank two minutes it's very hard <laughs> and for it's it's caused because of um, when you have isometric contraction yes your muscle contract uh, and you your muscle start to feel ischemia but for example when you do isotonic contraction your muscle again contract relax contract relax and if you remembered uh calf uh, muscles yeah when they contracted the blood flow chain uh, easier inside the muscle and here the same and not only uh, veins or also arteries they will be pressed and relaxed every time they you, when you relax your muscle during the isotonic contraction, you have some few seconds for blood flowing inside the muscle you, in arteries. But in isometric contraction, your muscle every time contract and blood flow decreased. Understanding this? And this is why we feel ischemia and fatigue uh, happen faster because of less oxygen. Understanding? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I hope. Next. Special. We have only a few slides, guys. Uh, special circulatory roads uh, in lungs. Here, the pulmonary arteries have seen distensible walls with less elastic tissue than the systemic arteries. This is the first difference. Uh, next, low pulmonary blood pressure, 25 or 10 millimeter of mercury, flow slower, more time for gas exchange, and it's important for our lungs. Because if you remember, we, when we discussed capillary exchange, yeah, blood pressure very important here, and decreased blood pressure inside the pulmonary uh, vessels, it increased gas exchange because it gives uh, more time. Engage in capillary fluid absorption. Uh, here, anchotic pressure overrides hydrostatic pressure, prevents fluid accumulation in alveolar walls and lumen. And it's also, and here in capillary, we have only reabsorption, if you remember. No filtration. We reabsorb excess liquid that have in alveolar to the vessels. Because if we have some liquid in alveolar, it will be stop our gas exchange. For preventing it, we have only reabsorption. You need, this is why pulmonary edema is very bad. We can't breathe. Our oxygen in blood level, oxygen level decreased. We have problem with the heart, with lung, and etc. Ischemia of all organs and other processes happen because of pulmonary edema. Unique response to hypoxia. Uh, pulmonary arteries constrict in diseased area and response for local hypoxia, redirect flow to the better ventilation region. Uh, if you remember when, when we discussed about the brain, I said that brain can, uh, tick, 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 here, blood flow can be shifted from one active brain region to another. 
in the brain. This same situation, not not same, but near uh, in the lungs. If uh, somewhere um, pulmonary artery attack, so we have disease in some area, some part of the lung, uh, the arteries here constrict and give all blood to another dilated region, but not diseased region for uh, for continue our gas exchange in normal level. It's different, it's not, not normal situation. We can say, for example, in, in, in ischemia, it constricted, not, not dilated, but it's helping us to uh, gas exchange normal level. This differences, you should know about this. Ah, here in this picture, you can see two circuits. Yes, pulmonary circuit. Here, this one, and this big systemic circuit. You, we know, yes, uh, this is a right ventricle. From right ventricle, we'll have pulmonary trunk. Uh, from pulmonary trunk, we have two uh, arteries, lung artery, pulmonary arteries that give to go to the two lungs. After that, we have gas exchange in them. And due to two pair of veins in both sides, the oxygenated blood back to the left atrium. After that, to the left ventricle, and due to aorta, goes to the brain, to the upper limb, to the uh, uh, thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity organs, and to the lower limb. Then we have systemic capillaries and go back due to inferior vena cava, take um, blood from the lower limb, from the abdominal cavity, and superior vena cava take blood from the brain for the upper limbs, part of the thoracic organs, uh, thoracic cavity organs, and go to the heart, to the right atrium. These two circuits, you must know this. Here, anatomy of the pulmonary circuit is about this. You must know that in the two, uh, we have two lungs. In the three one, we have, in the right one, we have three lobes. In the left one, we have only two lobes, superior, inferior. And it means if here in the right one, we have three lobes, it means that we have three arteries here. In, this, uh, in the left one, we have two lobes. It means we have two arteries here, one for the superior one, uh, one for the inferior one. OK? Or here in this picture, you can also see uh, superior lobar artery, uh, middle, uh, middle lobar artery, inferior lobar artery. Each one will be the, uh, also delivered for the little one. Here in the left one, we have superior lobar arteries. We have inferior lobar artery here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, this one, this main thing uh, this is system uh, tag. this is pulmonary circuit yes and the idea of the pulmonary circuit is to oxygenate our uh, blood but we have bronchial arteries bronchial arteries it's part of the systemic blood systemic circuit these bronchial arteries have oxygenated blood uh, and it needs for lung tissue because here you see for example this superior artery they are blue colored because it have deoxygenated blood it's the function only for oxygenate blood and lead it to the other organs but we know that we have lung tissue and lung tissue themselves also need oxygen for working yes and for Oxygenate lung tissue. We have bronchial arteries. They goes from the uh, thoracic part of the aorta. Yeah. Here, this one. Here, this is thoracic part of the aorta, and one it have some little branches that goes to the lungs. They will be calling bronchial arteries and supply our lung tissue themselves. 
okay? You must know that in the lungs, we have two circuits, pulmonary themselves, and also part of the systemic circuit, uh, like bronchial arteries that supply lung tissue with oxygen, okay? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes okay. students forget about this. Yeah, they said, okay, we have pulmonary, uh, superior lobar artery, middle artery, okay, we accident blood, go back to the heart, it's easy, easy, easy. But what about lung tissue? How it assignated? For example, about the heart, you remember this? Yes? When you learn heart, we know that, yeah, we have two uh, ventricles, two arteries, two great vessels, again, easy, easy, it's understanding. Okay. But what about muscle tissue themselves? How it oxygenated? Because in the aorta, we have bulb, bulbus here. This is bulbus. And in the bulbus, we have two arteries. Yes, right coronary artery in left coronary artery, two main arteries that go and supply mass heart muscle tissue. You remember this? And also we have veins that drain in the right atrium from the drained blood from the heart themselves to the right atrium. You remember I hope, I think. Okay. Yes, teacher, yes. Yeah, it's the same situation. Don't forget about the bronchial arteries. Only one sentence in the book, but you guys every time forget about this. It's very important. One sentence, but knowledge so much. Tiak. Next, I hope it's understanding. It's easy topic. Here, one information about varicosity. You remember uh, we haven't time for varicosity in the previous time, previous lecture. Uh, we discuss it, and here is normal. Yes, normal healthy vein. Let's look at this one because we discuss the valve work normal, and they prevent for stagnation for venous pooling here. Is, uh, and blood goes only to the heart directly. In varicosity vein, the valve didn't work normal. You see how they changed? It means uh, blood every time regurgitate back and it's changed the shape and also view of the veins and they didn't do the, the function. Yeah, it not dropped vein to blood to the heart. And like this is this is also normal view photo of the varicosity. Uh, some type of the treatment, sclerotherapy, this one. For example, for the little veins, we can do sclerotherapy, some injections, and after that, these uh, veins will be uh, changed. Uh, another, this is stripping. Here is a great operation. We um, maybe you heard venous afena magna, it's a superficial vein, it's cause of uh, varicosity. When you will learn uh, about the vessels, uh, you will read that we have two types of veins deep and superficial in the upper limb, in the lower limb, and in the um, lower limb. We have great saphenous magna vein, the biggest one, and but only five, ten percent of the blood drains by superficial vein. This is why we can take it away if uh, we have varicosity, because 18, uh, 90 percent of the vein drains, or of the blood drains uh, due to deep ones. That's why it's it's normal to do operation here, okay? Uh, because of varicosity changed venous afena magna, it's not, uh, don't do the function. It's if we have varicosity, it means uh, the blood don't uh, drains normally and it don't work and it's safer to take it, take it away. Not because of viewing, because of uh, risk of embolia and because of risk of thrombosis, yes? Uh, you remember stagnation of the blood, decreasing blood flow, it's a risk for what? Clotting. Clotting can, can happen here. And this clot can uh, 
uh, go up. But if we have clotting here, but also you go somewhere, your muscle calf working, the venous return is also working. It's, it means your blood want to go up. And if this clot go up, you can you have risk to blockage your uh, pulmonary artery here. For example, embolia of pulmonary artery and patient can die. This risk, you see, guys, this is why we do operation. This is stripping, for example. If you have uh, more changes, veins, not like this, they changeable, or we have thrombosis here, we do operation like this one. If it's a problem only with view, patient do sclerotherapy or phlebectomy, like this one, small cut, we take it, and this is your vein. You see? Or yes, another. Yes. On another type of treatment is endovenous vein ablation. You see, we can, uh, through the catheters, we close vein. We hit, you see, catheter in the vein, vein hit it, and after that, it's closed. That's all. Do you have some questions, guys? Because it's last lecture, my lecture. After that, of course, we have another lectures. Do you have some questions? No, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for participating for my lecture. Good luck for your CC, for your practical lessons. Thank you, teacher. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Have a nice Goodbye. day. Bye, bye, bye. Goodbye, have a nice day. Thank you.